Okay, story time. I don't have the story in front of me, so I'm going to have to paraphrase. You're just going to have to be happy about that. But it's a pretty basic scenario, so... Uh, oh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Some of you had trouble with that notification bell before. Uh, something about the YouTube settings, so hopefully I've changed it by the time you've seen this video and can actually hit that bell. And uh, get on my private list to talk about things so I can send you spam, free, ad-free content when I make it. Uh, there are things I can't talk about on YouTube. So, um, getting into it, all right, so let's talk about... Um, this is a vignette. So Guy had been seeing his, started seeing a girl in like February, January, February, and they're in a long-term relationship now, okay? And things have been going relatively okay, but he expressed an issue, which was that she was um, basically having a lot of anxiety and a lot of dread over Instagram and Facebook, and she was getting on. And like, you know, she, when she, whenever she would see other women comments or like his stuff, she would get pissed off and create drama about that. And so he's wondering how to handle that. So I will tell you how to handle it here. So look, that's, that can happen. All right. If she has attachment issues and problems, you know, she could get an insecurity over, um, things like that. So the question is, though, to what degree, you know, so she what what she's saying when that happens is that she is got too much anxiety and she needs a little bit of comfort. So she's on the anxious side of things right now. And you need to bring her into the comfort side a little bit. Anxiety happens. OK, a little bit of dread, a little bit of anxiety. That's not a bad thing. But if she's taking it to a level where it's toxic, now that's a problem. OK, and I will tell you, if she can't get control of her emotions and her anxiety, that will destroy a long term relationship. All right. That's also a sign of borderline personality disorder. Women with borderline personality disorders have very little emotional self-control. They're controlling. OK, their anxiety goes up and they try to control your behavior and they um they have extreme or ex accelerated uh, fears of abandonment. And so they'll often fabricate problems that don't exist, acting like you're a terrible person who is trying to get the attention of other women when you're not doing that. And under reasonable circumstances, nobody would think that. And then she'll create a straw man where you're a bad person. And then she'll go seek out attention from other men and possibly cheat on you and justify it in her head and justify it as you are the one doing that stuff, right? She, so she'll look at every interaction on Facebook that you've had with another female if her if she's BPD and her anxiety goes like that. And this is a BPD tactic. This is often something they'll do. They'll gaslight which means change the narrative or reality, you know, so they'll fabricate a reality where you're, you must be cheating and you must be doing all the wrong things, seeking attention from women. And then they will counter that by seeking attention from men and then potentially cheating on you or at the very least presenting that to you so she can try to make you insecure and control you. None of this is conducive of healthy long-term relationship. So you're right around the point now. If you guys got together January, February, March, April, May, June, July, we're getting into August. So six months into it. Yeah. So if she is BPD or has serious attachment problems, now is the time that these things are going to start manifesting themselves. She's been keeping a cap on it for a while and you know, I don't know whole patterns of the relationship, so to know whether she shows or demonstrates BPD traits, but now the stuff comes out. So this is a red flag, and this could be a problem. The fact that you posted this and that you wrote about this, you know, and we talked about this, whatever, that this tells me that there is a problem, that, that it's a problem. You know, it's not just she has a little bit of anxiety, but then you make her feel better and then she's okay. It's that this is causing a conflict in the relationship. That's a red flag and that is a potentially a potential destruction of this relationship. So here's how you handle it because I don't know which she is and maybe you don't either. And so it's a matter of degree in, ex in how extreme it is. Now if she just has an, a little bit of attachment issues and a little bit of insecurities but she's not personality disorder. She's not 
ex, you know, completely toxic, then that's workable. And so how you work about work with that is you make the big problems smaller. Okay, so she's saying, oh man, these all who are all these girls commenting and who's there? Did you sleep with her? And what's your history with this person or whatever? You know, and just kind of like s smile and sort of use what's something called amuse mastery and just kind of, it seems like this big problem and just be like, oh yeah, I told you, know, yeah, I, I've been banging all these girls on Facebook before I met you. It was crazy, you know, and you're like, come on now, I'm just, I'm joking. Okay, obviously, no, that's not what it is. This is nothing. I, I knew this girl from this, but, you know, we're not going to go through every single girl that ever comments or likes or anything on my stuff, you know, to, we don't need to do that. If there's nobody that's a threat to you, I'm in a relationship to you with you. If I have something I need to tell you about somebody on Facebook because there was a previous relationship or something serious or somebody's trying something, you know, maybe I, I, I'll tell you that stuff. But, you you know, don't worry about, you know, people commenting or liking or whatever. And I'm not going to do anything inappropriate. So, I mean, whatever. You just kind of quell that anxiety. Use a little amuse mastery, you know, a little bit of kind of, a, you know, a little joking around to kind of make she's got this and make it seem what it is, which is really small, you know, and you can even use some emotionality. I don't know how emotional you are with your girl or how, how that emotional connection is, but it's not bad to tell her things like, look, baby, I, I love you. All right. We're in, I'm in it with you. So I don't need to tell you that you should know that by now. All right. So I'm going to bang you out later and make you orgasm a whole bunch of times. And you're going and make you realize that girls on Facebook don't matter okay like and you can have that little conversation and if she feels better okay when you have that communication with her because you're you're helping her to realize that this is just an anxiety it's gonna be okay you know and she gets control over her own anxiety that's a good sign okay she's not if it, if it easily goes away through a little amuse mastery a little bit of hey here's what it is but I'm, I'm not gonna do this with you all right Social media, social media, you know, that's not an issue, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You quell those anxieties pretty easily or, you know, you just by giving her a little bit of comfort that she needs, then you should be all right. Right now, she is too high on the uh, anxiety side of it. So you got comfort and you have tension. All right. So she's too high on the attention side. The, there's too, too much tension. All right. She needs some of that tension relieved with a little bit of comfort, all right? And that's why saying things like, it, it, you know, no, I'm in it with you, you know, having that emotional connection is okay. It's not going to screw you up on a hypergamous sense. If there's too much comfort and then you're feeding her with comfort all the time, that's how you screw yourself up with her hypergamy where she starts to see herself as better than you and, you know, there's not enough sexual tension in that circumstance. So. But too much tension brings anxiety and toxicity, right? So we don't want that. So you have to be able to pull her a little bit to the comfort side. Now, if you do reasonable attempts and good attempts to do that, and that's a whole game discussion and maybe a coaching session on how to do that. If, you, or if you're not effective with your game and communication with women, that's something we work on in a session, okay? Because there's a way to do it, way not to do it. So you pull her over to the comfort side. You do what's reasonable, what any normal healthy woman would respond to, to bring her to comfort. And then she's not responding to that. And she is then accelerating the toxicity. Then you have to take the next step. So the next step then is to tell her, listen, I'm not going to put up with this. This is toxic. I'm not going to deal with an insecure woman. You don't have any reason to be insecure. I don't make you feel that way. You know, and, and, and this is a hard boundary. And I'm going to tell you this only one time. This will break the relationship because I will not do this. And you let her know. This is not an explanation. I, although I explained a little bit more than I probably would in this video to you. It's not an explanation. It's a statement of fact. So you never explain things to women, but you do give statements of fact. Listen, this is toxic. I'm not dealing with an insecure woman who's going to freak out all the time over something so, so dumb. Okay, so if you can't get a hold of your anxiety and listen to what I'm saying when I tell you that there's nothing with these women, then that's going to break the relationship. I'm just telling you right now that that tells me you're not healthy enough to have a good relationship with somebody. Like We have a great thing going and you're trying to blow it up with this. We're not going to do that. 
you set the standard, all right? So you went from Amuse Mastery, trying to make a big problem smaller, giving her a little bit of comfort. She didn't respond to that. Okay, you gotta set the standard now. This is a deal, I'm not gonna deal, I'm not gonna deal with toxic shit. Here's my standard, all right? She continues to break your standard, you do soft next. So now you, you, you I'm not doing this. And you, you go someplace else, Hopefully you don't, co I don't think you cohabitate with her, so it is no contact for a day or two. I am not talking to you right now because you are too toxic for me to deal with. And then it's no contact for a day or two or three, okay? And you escalate the amount of time. Each time she does this, you don't give her that explanation or statement of fact again, all right? You, you don't explain yourself. You've told her once what it is. She already knows, all right? So if she keeps pushing and being toxic over something like this, and you start removing your time and energy. That's what a soft next is. You're not going to allow for toxicity in your life. You set a boundary, and so you are no contact with her for a day. Then maybe she, she's still toxic or she does it again. Maybe it's a couple days, and then so on. Now, after doing a few soft nexts, if she cannot, if she gets more toxic with the soft next and tries to force the communication and tries to force and doesn't respect your boundaries you have to you have to break that relationship because her she either has a attachment disorder an anxious attachment disorder that is so toxic that she will not be able to be healthy with you or she is m might be bpd might be borderline personality disorder and is bringing this toxicity to you either way she's too toxic to be with and so now you have to end it Okay, so those are your steps. So quick review, all right? You start off with Amuse Mastery, make a big problem small, tell her it's okay, feed her, give her some comfort, give her some emotion, emotional connection, depending on where you guys are at at six months, I don't know, all right? And she should res a healthy woman will respond well to that, okay? An unhealthy woman that's a problem is not gonna respond well to that is going to continue to be a problem. In which case, you set the standard and you tell her we're not doing this and if you can't stop, this will eventually end the relationship. Now, she'll either fall in line and realize that that is the standard or she's going to break your standard and continue to bring toxic conflict into your life over bullshit. And then you start the soft nexting process. After a few times of that, if she can't fix her shit, then you have to leave her. You know, and when you leave her, you can offer therapy for some different things, but she's got a problem now. She's got a problem. She is not able or capable of having a healthy relationship. Remember from previous videos I've done, most women are not capable of a healthy relationship. They're just not, okay? And so you, that, that demonstrates that she's not. You've reached this crossroad, and this is where it has to end. Now, going forward in the future, you got to work on your vetting, man. You shouldn't be in an LTR with somebody at all that's not potential, to, that doesn't have the capabilities of having a, a healthy relationship. So something is wrong with your, and if, if she is BPD and showing all those signs, something is wrong with your attraction triggers. Something is wrong with your vetting process because you're getting, you're allowing yourself to be in a long-term relationship with somebody who is not capable or has a personality disorder right? Those aren't good things, okay? So those are your steps. And if it ends up in ending in a breakup because of the things that I'm saying, that means you need some more work here, all right? And you know we've talked already. So book another session and we're going to start working on getting your vetting process better and unpolluting those attraction triggers because a normal healthy guy is going to notice things and not be attracted to a BPD woman or a woman with extreme uh, anxious problems and so on and so forth, all right? A guy who has his attraction triggers polluted or has attachment problems himself is going to be attracted to toxic things. Ask me how I know, all right? So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks again for the support. Thanks for watching. Take care.